Second quarterfinal of the East Zealand on 2 and 2 Cup. Who will follow Law Lyot and Soin into the top four? We had two Korean teams battling. And now we have two Chinese. And one of them is was for a long, long time the best 2 and 2 team in the world. It's Ted and Hainu, uh, the former WCG champion Ted, now the most famous caster in all of China. They are facing the 2 and 2 specialists of No Way OC and Peace. So let's go into this game right away. No Way OC and Peace in the blue. This is No Way OC as an orc in the 12 o'clock, his ally Peace, who I've never seen before. As a night elf, um, so I was lying a little and not playing human. Um, seems like they have some race switching going on as they played a different combo in the round of 16. And their opponents, the favorites, maybe of this entire tournament. Um, it's Hainu, a former world elite player, uh, definitely the commander of this team. He's doing the calls. And Ted's just following. This is what we learned from a couple of interviews they gave. It's really cool that Ted is still around for this 2 and 2 He said, I don't need too much micro. Uh, I just need good decision making. I get that from Hainu. And yeah, let's try our best. Gonna be a lot of fiends. They had this super dedicated tier 2 push. Which, was, which no one was able to defend for several years. Uh, sometimes even tier 3, but let's see how this works. Of course, we are on Nullwood. This means we have to do the guessing game. And it is a fountain of mana. As you can see, this is a little purple and not blue. Or more purple than blue. So that is a fountain of mana right there. Ted and Hainu with Huntress and Fiends as it's the standard and the most logical choice for an undead a Night Elf combo. Attack. Uh, what is Peace doing? I guess he was feeding his ally, who's going grunts, by the way. Farseer grunts. Uh, no TC headhunters anymore. But where are the units coming from? It's gonna be interesting. Creeping starts with wolves and grunts, so he's trying to level up this Farseer a little. I really wonder what their game plan is. And why... Oh, it's a fast tech! What the hell? A player's it's a double fast attack. tech. So of course everyone knows how Ted and Hainu are playing. And what they do. So they're not relying on mass tier 1 units. They're trying to outrush them. As uh, Hainu will be on tier 1 most likely throughout the entire day. Going for a single Huntress build first into mass Huntress. So there's no way he can tech. Ted focusing on a couple of fiends first to the own the map at this point. Yeah, you can see already that it's really, really different from the games we've seen before of Lolli at so in Jack and Lucifer. Okay, found that mana, you saw it. Which is good for Raz. Uh, you can use more entangles the entire time, as you can see here. Ted's actually going for the expansion. Uh, there's no Acolyte here, of course. Maybe Hainu will send the Wisp. Which would surprise me, because it was a lot about pushing for them. But they should have scouted the text by now. And must be aware. So there are Wisps coming out for this expansion. Could be intercepted by this Keeper. There's a little attack. From the Farseer and the Wolves and the Chain Lightning, killing the first Acolyte off. Staff onto a Wisp. How nicely done by Pease. And Ted can't go for the tech at the moment. He has to repair the Acolytes and need to defend this alongside High Noon. Next Chain Lightning. It's a lot of mana invested, but it's so worth it. Next Acolyte down. Oh boy. That's big. There must be some kind of cut. Wait. A player's forces are under attack. It's not expanding. He is tower rushing. Wow. A town is under siege. Big, big, big wow. 
I've not seen this from them yet. Two APs coming up for Hainu. Ted has a lot of firepower, still tier one. Again, very dedicated push, both on tier one. So what will prevail, the tech or the mass? TC is coming. No reinforced defenses here. Old school undead push into an orc base. Can they protect the towers? Nice chain lightning again, but that was the last bit of mana pretty much. Entangle on the fast here, might be forced into a TP. No way OC is in trouble. We have an alchemist here, most likely for some healing early on. No acid bomb it is. And the first tower has been cancelled by archers. Hunters are fighting against it though, and this one will come up. This one is up. And it's only one. Another grunt falls. Oh, Ted is doing a good job here. Keeping OC supply stock. He got the TC out, but that's about it. So the tower positioning a lot more aggressive this time. If they take out the shop, it's almost GG. AP is slowly moving forward. We have a lot of wisps here. These archers don't do too much at all. Can the TC connect? It was okay. Ted has a lot of coils to work with though. Only level one at this point, but one more kill is level three and he gets it here. Oh, that's so big. The Keeper is leveling up to two as well. Massive Storm though. That's a chance to kill something. But now they're fighting in tower range and Peace has to TP out as well. Repositioning to get behind the Grunts to have the Archers a little more safe. Acid Bomb is helping. Second tower is up. This AP is not doing anything, but maybe they just don't need it. Wisp coming in for the detonate. How many can they snipe? They want the DK so bad. One down, two down. Th almost three down. Ay, ay, ay. He's getting that one detonate only. Hainu is losing some hunters, but that's what they're there for. The TC has one more potion by being caught by a coil in a tangle. This is not looking good for the underdogs right there. It can still go for the shop and heal up a little. Ted is losing quite some HP against this acid bomb now, but same goes for Peace. Piercing damage reduced. Next chain lightning is the next kill, but this could be the next coil could kill the TC almost. Ooh, and a little break right here. Maybe some spikes. We don't want that. And we continue. Next AP. This AP is now in range of the base. And once the shop dies, it's gonna be a problem. TC is still so hurt. One coil can almost kill him already. Level three for the keeper. That was fast. And now the shop is gone. How can they get out of this chokehold? Ted is diving deep. Are under but okay, he has the backing of the fiends. No mana anymore. One more storm in a bit. And the towers just hold. Oh my god, we have hippo riders. Ted has no tier 2, if I'm seeing this correct. So having air could be nice, but OC is constantly losing grunts. Like the beef has been eaten in seconds, like at a barbecue. And they are crippling OC more and more and more with the two APs up. They're not in range of so much, but they lost another burrow. Just wyvern now. Mass air against this. Is that the solution? Not if they lose the heroes. Fasia low, TC low, retreating into the furthest point of the base. Having a Lich now would be crucial. Next Boro down, level 4 for the DK. And they just pressure him. Pressure, 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 pressure. Does Peace have the time to build a big army? It's three Hippo Riders only. They are doing pretty much no damage. And they have web. Okay. That must be it. TC is dead as well. It's the GG. And that was a fast one. Ted and Hainu underline their favorite status in this game. Kill No Way OC and Peace in 9 minutes 22. And again, this is what they do. A very dedicated push when your opponent does not expect it. This fast tier 2 didn't work one bit. And that's what you get. That's what you get.
They were surprised. I think it wasn't their original game plan to go for this push. But seeing the tech, they decided, okay, all or nothing for us. And it was all. I don't really get why he built hunters. I mean, yeah, for the tech, okay. But everything was so late. The mass air didn't work at all. Not at all. Should have gotten another coffee. But maybe it's better to not have too much coffee. Yeah, Grubby and Todd will play later against uh, Remind and Soju. In another quarterfinal. <laughs> no! No, no, no. The answer to this is always no. But it's match points for Ted and Hainu. They would face uh, either Infi and TH or Chimiko and Sock on Thursday. And let's have game number two. I hope this won't desync again. But all right. The favorites prevail. They have match points. And it would be no surprise really to see them in the semi-final. This is where we expect them to be. I'm pretty sure that in every single two and two competition we've had, uh, they went at least to the finals. I'm not 100% sure, but pretty much. So, we have no AOC and P's in the bottom, in the blue. And Ted and Hainu at the top. At the red, we are of course on Turtle Rock, as you can see. So again, Fast Fiends and Hunts and a normal Orc build with either Blade or Farseer plus Grunts and an Archer build. So Keeper Archers, not too sure if this works too well. On Turtle Rock though, you have these two lanes at the shops here. And here, and there will be battles throughout the entire early game. And with a Farseer and a Keeper, you can pressure a lot. This is what it's supposed to accomplish, I guess. Most likely with a fast tech again. Wouldn't be too surprised to see that. Uh, maybe their mass air is working a little better. The idea was good, I think, to pressure Ted into a late tier 2 tech. For the late anti-air, but once it was out, it was just GG. I think they were caught by surprise by this tower rush. Town is under so, let's see. Creeping starts. First blood immediately for no way OC. Keepers coming over as well. They will meet in the middle as attack. the archer is cleaning this up. So we'll keep an eye on the main bases to see how fast they will be attacking. Ted now with the DK out and the first beans. Creeping for no way OC, okay. Kind of surprised to not see him harassing. This kind of means that he wants level 2 for the chain lightning again. And maybe that indicates another push into the echo line. Tangle war right here in the north. 
<laughs> Real nice to see. More creeping for Ted for the unholy aura. Uh, Hainu has to retreat already. And this is the level 2 Farseer. He didn't use too many wolves just yet. Tech is on the way. Same for peace. So, we have this fast tech again. Okay, this time he really wants to creep further. A player's forces are under attack. On the other side, Ted is doing this. Using coils to own the Observer Ward. Keepers and Tangle doesn't do too much at this point. Hainu is teching as well. It was just a solo hunt build for him. So not massing at all. And Ted... Wow, very long tier 1 for him. So if they go mass air again... And being not interrupted this time. I can see this work. From the way OC. But there's a timer on them. Like a big, 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 big clock ticking. If there's tier 2 and web. Kind of easy. For Ted. Who is the carry in the late game, of course. Hainu also with archers. Maybe this is preparing already. Or even saving this archer. Nice. Maybe this is preparing already for the mass air that they expect to see. We have no hunters hall. So I'm pretty sure they go archers and hippo riders again. A lot of mana used on this keeper to just fend him off. But they get a fiend for their efforts. So 15 tech though. That's a lot. He's fast here level 3. What can he do? He has a lot of mana, so chain lightning is a thing. And with acid bomb, that's a big damage coming in, but entangles. So good. Not getting the pit lord! Alrighty! That is a weird hero pick. If you expect air. I mean, lowers the damage. Level 2 wolves, by the way. Oh no! It's being surrounded right away. It's Hall of Terror. Cleave doesn't do it too much. He's opening up the way. DK can still heal him. Would have been a lot of damage. Granted. So there was the second last coil. For it. The wolves. There's still not a spell. The wolves are great against the fiends. Diminishing the damage output. Another fiend lost. Man, this battle. I mean, both sides are losing a lot. Still level 1. For Hainu, good trade, Archer for Grunt, you always take that. This Alchemist play worked well, but Ted with a good coil. What about this one though? Can't save everything. But he's going into Hainu's base again. We have a Shadow Hunter, by the way, for OC. So he can heal up with Moon Juice now, can use a Clarity. We have a Staff as well. So, double Engine of Wind up. Beastery up. This time Raider Walker. Maybe last game was just a desperate attempt to get some damage out with that Wyvern. Ted is on tier 2, going Lich and more Fiends. A player's forces are under attack. We have the next fight. Everything's so hurt! Ted can fight this, the pressure is working! So far. Howl of Terror and pretty much nothing. It was a big dispel from a whiz. These wolves do give a lot of XP though. But they don't reduce the net worth of the army. So they have to get some actual kills. Like now on this Grunt or on this Raider. Especially this Raider. Taking out this Raider is big. For the delayed and snare. And now the Lich comes in. Hello. Well, Frost Armor. No Nova against this? Wow. Okay, they hold. They hold again. And now it's Dryads. And most likely Web. And Statues. This was, I guess, the most dangerous push. Maybe the first air push. No walker yet. Here we go. First two Hippogriffs fighting for the turtle. Ted and Hainu get it. And level two. Cleave is big. 
sleeve is real big. But we do have the first Tipper Riders on. Wonder if Ted has web already. Doesn't seem like it, so they retreat. These Dryads are melting against this. Good ethereal form. Spirit Link is helping a lot. And Ted, where is the web? You can see this mass airplay see from like a mile ago. Uh, coming from a mile ago. Away, whatever. That's a bomb now. Hex as well to prevent the damage. I know it's decent micro on the Dryads now, saving both of them, but they are overwhelmed. Level 2 for the Alchemist. It is losing a lot as well. This smells like an equalizer. There's no tier 3. Statues can't read. Because there's just so much in the middle. And I'm really not sure about this frost armor pick. Statue, so important. Statue, so dead. Oh no. And now we have web. The player's forces are under attack. Okay. Was this the critical attack that they had to survive? Or did no way OC and P's do enough damage? He really wanted the statue, but he's giving up so much HP because of it. Does the alchemist have a staff? No. Oh, this is dangerous. Could be a TP. Especially since the air army is being caught out in the open. That's TP. And they survive. A player's forces are under attack. Mm, no expansion anywhere. But creeping for the consumer box. Close to four. And finally Nova. And a big mana. That's gonna be a lot of spells right there. 2-2 two, two on Peace's side. 3-2 and double heal scroll for OC. That can be that can be big. Yo, thank you, Thendis, for the 36-month resub. And a happy belated birthday, my man. How old are you now? 14? <laughs> I hope you had a good day, man. And a good weekend in general. A player's forces are under attack. So next fight with Spirit Link. There's no destroyers yet, but a combined army. Can everything reach here? Not everything, but they have to split their attention now if an attack is coming from the air. I mean, again, the Hippo Riders work nicely against the Dryads. Just a question how fast you can protect them with beams. Next Raiders are falling. Heal Spray. Prevents the kill for a little, but that's about it. And they defend this again. Always being close to their bases, having faster reinforcements. And this air disable is doing so well. The position... I don't know. The Dryads still in trouble. Oh, okay. Level 3 Keeper now. Lich is using a lot of frost armor. The webs are picking out these hippos out of the air and just kill them off in no time. Raid of Fall as well. I think they survived this early tier 2 aggression. Ted is losing a couple of fiends as well, but that's fine. He has 800 gold. TC is in trouble. Uh, TC. Uh, Shadowhunter is in trouble. Has a heal scroll. Needs to use it. There we go. There was a last bit of healing and he falls. Level 3 on the ledge. There's more Nova in a bit. And I guess that's the GG hold. Fuss here was in the middle of everything. Nova in 10 seconds. Oh, or a statue is coming. So Nova in a sec. Can't reach for the hero anymore. So what's plan B or C or whatever? I don't think they have one. The Pit Lord pick to buy time was a little genius. So now we have tier 3. We get the Crypt Lord. We get Destroyers. Things are not getting better for No Way OC and Peace from this point on. They wanted mass, they wanted a fast push, they got that, but they didn't break their opponent's necks. And as I said, there was a timer on them. We do 
do have TPs. The Shadow Hunter is back. A kind of low mana, only half. So, last stand for the underdogs. Or can they slap back? Because Dryad taking out, but there's quite a bunch of them. They pretty much have a split fight right here. Good slow on the grunts. They might be both falling. Yep, with Entangle, they sure do. Close to four Pit Lord. Excuse me, level four Pit Lord. He's so strong now. The player's forces are under attack. DK level 5. I think at this point this is not winnable anymore. Coil Nova Alchemist gone in seconds. GG! The underdogs had a decent game plan here, but it was not working out. Ted and Hainu defend this like three times in this game. <laughs> and advance to the top four as well, following Law Lyot and so in. And that means we have two out of four teams ready. And we will have two more. But those games will be on Thursday as tomorrow is a solo competition in Shanghai uh, with TH120, Lin and Fly. Three of the four players are in this tournament. So they will play the offline event tomorrow and then the quarterfinals on Thursday. Again, our schedule for this week is pretty damn awesome. You can check the schedule as always on backtowarcraft.com. It's not the full schedule yet, um, but most of it. I will fill this content uh, and, like in an hour or so. So here you see it. Uh, today was Issy London 2 and 2 Cup. A short stream as we only had two of the matches. Tomorrow, 6 a.m. Ladies and gentlemen, get up early with me. Oh, wait, you don't see it. Now you see it. Uh, People Premier League, $5,600. TH, Lin, 1 to 0 and Fly. Three best of threes. That's going to be good. Offline is always special, especially with TH. And maybe uh, Lino120 can finally get a solo title towards Newbie, which they don't have yet. It's a lot of Rogue Warriors and, of course, Happy and Moon claiming titles. Wednesday, we continue with the Penguin Sky Cup, where we will see Happy's team Lucky Future alongside Soen, WFZ, and Ice Orc against winners. That is Tomiko Sok. Uh, Fov and who in the last round of the round robin before we go into the king of the hill and then on Thursday as promised the EC London 2 and 2 finals with the two uh, quarterfinals with the two semifinals and the grand final before we continue with the penguin sky cup on Friday and Saturday and maybe even Sunday, I'm not too sure. And of course, W League Europe and W3IL. This week, every single day, back to Warcraft action. Warcraft action. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to this as I feel refreshed. And uh, yeah, my mind has been rejuvenated after a couple of, I don't know, downtimes recently. That's it for the day. You know exactly when to tune in tomorrow. You're all set for the week. And I hope you have a great one. Today was nice. Thank you very much for tuning in and overwhelmed with kindness. These negative voices in the scene must be silenced by us. And yeah, support your favorite streamers, whoever that is. You can find our links in the stream description for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, uh, ways to support us financially with PayPal, uh, credit card, cryptocurrency, subs, merchandise and affiliate links. All that in the description. Thank you, Friedel, for the nine-month baby rage. Thank you. And with that, adios. See you tomorrow, 6 a.m.